Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, webinar looking at Pano2 VR and its modifiers. Um, right, so as we said, we're looking at Pano2 VR and its modifiers. Um, I'm Martin from Support and I'm joined today by... Hi everyone, I'm Karen and I'll be in the background here answering questions. Uh, so if you do have a question, please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen. You want to show where that is, Martin? Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right there. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, um, because that's where we will be looking for questions. <clears throat> um, and uh, try to keep your questions on topic. Uh, we will try to answer all of them. And uh, yeah, enjoy enjoy the web uh, webinar. It's a, I think it'll be a fun one today. So uh, yeah. Take All it. right. Thank you, Karen. Right. So let's start off then. I've got Pano 2 VR already opened. Um, this is a project that we've used in the past. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's there's uh, no surprises here. But what I've done here is I've linked the um, nodes up using Polygon hotspots. I've added a Polygon hotspot for information, added out them um, uh, and given it a bit of information there, like a bit of text. And I've got a, a, a Polygon hotspot here to open a website. So that's basically the pre-configuring I've done to save a little bit of time so we can concentrate more on the skin and on the modifiers. Okay, so I'm going to open the skin up. And what I'm going to show you is that I've already added a compass. All right. So I've got compass graphics. Now they've got no settings or anything like that. If you want to know where to get all this, if you go to, um, let's have a look, um, Garden Gnome Software, let's go to forum. If you go to the skins and the components, there we go. And I've done that a bit quick you can actually go to the components index and here are all the components that you guys can download. And one of those is the compass. And if we select that, you'll see that this compass will be already configured. Uh, there's a couple of types where the bezel moves or the pointer moves. So that's there for you to, to work with. I will be going through how this works in this webinar. That's what I'm just about to do um, because it's using modifiers for it to work. But if you look, the reason why I'm showing you this is because of the two different bezels. This one where the pointer moves, the bezel, all the letters, all the characters are upright. Of course, where the bezel turns around, the characters were changed. So they're the right way up as and when the bezel gets to the top. All right. So that's that. So that's basically um, the, the, the compass you can download and use straight away. In fact, that compass has got um, a skin configuration uh, um, where you can actually change between the pointer or the radar beam. Um, here you can see we've got the beam and, um, and we've got the pointer. I'll be showing both things today. Right, so we're talking about modifiers. Um, now the first modifier then I'm gonna show you is one for the compass and the radar, uh, the actual pointer itself. We want this pointer actually what I'll do is back up a little bit. I've jumped in a bit too quick really. Modifiers, what are they? I think that'll be the best thing to do is to explain what they are. If I select an element like the uh, compass pointer, you'll see that I can give this element actions, but also we've got down below here, this, this um, uh, tab for modifiers. And we can modify this element um, depending on a bunch of different targets. So we can, uh, we, we can move it with the X and the Y and we can scale it and we can scale it X and Y and we can rotate it. So this is what we're doing with this element. So we can, we can well, modify it. But with the compass, what I'm going to do is say, right, I want to um, uh, rotate it and I want to rotate it to pan north. All right. So wherever I've got my north setting in the panorama, this now pointer will point to it. So that was fairly painless. So let's just export this and see it. So there's the panorama. And when I rotate it, the pointer changes. Okay. Now this relies on the um, north setting of the panorama. So if you're going to user data, you can say, uh, see north is set. I've got it set to, you know, here. If I was to hold down the N key, and rotate the north setting. Um, and let's just export this. So now it's going to be slightly off. Yeah, because north is now here. And you can see the compass has reacted to it. Okay, so I'm just going to turn on my grid view. 
and I'm going to put that there. Hold down the N key again to get my compass back and put my north heading back. And just to show you that it's done, now looking straight at the building and now we're looking straight north. So that's basically using the modifier to create a mouse pointer. Um, now, obviously, that will work with any element. So if I was to drag a rectangle, I could give the rectangle the same modifier. So we could rotate it, uh, pan north, click OK, and that will do now exactly the same thing. It's a rotate the panorama. You can see we're modifying in, in speech marks or quotations, the element. Okay, so that's that's quite cool. Right, so what other things can we do with this radar? Now I'm using um, the rotation for the pointer, but what I could do is I'll delete it from there. And I'm now gonna go to the, the bezel, so the compass ring. I'm just going to collapse that in the tree because there's no need to see all the little text boxes. Basically, the bezel itself is a rectangle set to um, uh, the, the radius 999, so it's circular. And then it's got, as child elements, just little text boxes, north, south, east, west. The great thing about this is if you want to get creative, you could actually click on a text box and give it a mouse click action that when you click it, you change the panorama's heading. So the compass, you could you know click these headings and you could rotate the compass or rotate the panorama towards those headings if you wish. That was the idea of doing this and having separate elements rather than just creating uh, a single graphic because it gives you much more uh, freedom uh, to, to change things. But anyway, I'm gonna uh, hide that so I just see the main compass element. And what I'm going to do is give this the same modifier. So we're going to rotate this and we're going to pan north and I'm going to click OK. And what we should get is something a little bit odd. So if I'm facing north, I'm going to pan the panorama over to the left to look to the east. Right. So if I do that. Oh, it's not. I'm panning to the west. So that's because. What I need to do is change the um, uh, the value of the factor. I need to set that to a minus because we're going in the opposite direction. Okay, so let's close and save. And now when I look to the east, the compass rotates to the east with me. You can see now why I, on the other ring that the east would be sitting upright, but I'm not going to change it there. You, know, you can always download it from the website to get the correct compass ring for however you're going to use it. OK, so that's basically a couple of the settings for using the um, rotate modifier. Now, what we're going to do is change this. So let's just um, put this back. So I don't want the compass rotating. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide the pointer and I'm going to show the radar beam. All right, make that visible. And in the skin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the uh, compass in view by clicking the eye button and show the eye click here to show it in the skin. So even though um, uh, I've I've hidden showed uh, hide and showed it on the output to see it correctly in the skin, I needed to change what I'm looking at here. OK, so what I'm going to do here with the radar beam dot is do exactly the same before. So I'm going to give that the um, rotate it on pan north. OK, so let's close, save and have a look. And we should see our radar beam doing exactly what it should be doing. There it goes. Right now. But what I want to do is give the beam a little bit more um, uh, user feedback. So when I zoom in and out, I want the beam to get narrower and expand bigger on the zoom. So how do I do that? Well, again, that's done with the modifiers. What I'm going to do is select the radar beam itself. There it is. And I'm going to give the beam the modifiers to now I want to scale it, but I want to scale it in the X direction. So it's the width. So it's going, so the width is going to scale. All right. So that's what we're going to do. And then I want the source is going to be, um, uh, I'm going to, as I'm zooming, it's going to be field of view. So I'm going to use the tan uh, field of view. All right. So let's click that, click OK. And let's have a look at what it does. And there we go. It's now linked to that element. So when I zoom in and out, you get it to, to work there. All right. Now I want to do one other little thing to the radar beam. 
And that is when I look down and up, I also want the radar beam to reflect that I'm doing this as well. So again, what we can do is go back to the beam and I'm going to give it another modifier. Um, so let's have a look at this. And what I want to do is I want to scale it in the Y direction there. I want it to, to you know, it's actually going to scale, you know, um, uh, up and down in the Y direction uh, to simulate looking up and down. Now, the source for that is going to be the tilt. So cos tilt. Now, I know you've got these, you know, one tan field of views and cos pans. Um, I'm not a mathematician. I don't know exactly what they do. All I know is that, you know, I'm looking for the tan field of view for when we're zooming. I'm looking for the tilt when we're uh, uh, zooming in and out. These are actually described in our documentation. Um, but yeah, we, we've actually put the, the proper math equation in there. But yeah, I mean, basically, we're just looking for the tilt. OK, so if I close, save and export this, we should now see that my radar beam, it spins around, it gets bigger and smaller. And when I tilt down or look up, the beam reacts to that as well. OK, I think that's our, uh, a good place for our first stop and see if we've got any questions. Um, Karen, do we have any questions? Uh, no. Hi, I, th I, I don't see any questions quite yet, but um... Awesome. Yeah, uh, we can give <laughs> anyone a moment. But I think it was pretty clear. It was quite clear what you're doing. So right, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think All you right, can okay. go ahead. All right, like I want oh, some. Oh wait, questions. I'm sorry. There's a question. <laughs> oh good. I mean, I can have another supper with tea. Right, that's good. Oh, there's no question. It just says Luca. Just says really clear. <laughs> Okay, I'll put Never my cap. <laughs> I'll put my cup back down again, then, shall I? Right, okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yep. So. Okay. Cool. Right. <laughs> so that's basically the made uh, radar beam, um, and that's you know all the things we can do with it. So you can rotate bezels or or whatever. Um, you can also, if it's a bit big, um, you know, you can just click on the main container of it, and we can scale it down. So let's scale it down to seventy five by seventy five. If I scale it, if you look at the um, scaling, I've actually already pre-selected it. Um, it normally would come set to the center, but I'm going to set the, the top right hand side. So it's going to reduce in size going to the top right. So let's just see what that looks like. It makes it a little bit more smaller and manageable. There you go. All right. OK. And I suppose, yeah, let's just just do one more little trick with it then. So on the on the 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 beam dot that I've put in the middle, we could give it the um, mouse click. Um, I'm going to go view and I'm going to go to move to default view. Um, we have these options. So speed, I'm going to whack it up because I want it to get it to its default view quickly. So speed is four. And just because I like to, I'm going to use ease out and back. So it's going to swing it around, go past where it should be and then drop back a little bit more. There we go. So. I think that's quite a cool effect. So let's just have a look at what that does just to finish off the beam. So now if I click in the center, boop, there we go. So as I say, what we could have done is used move to views in all of these text boxes as well. So as people clicked northwest, southeast, you could get the panorama to pan round to those. All right. I think that's the radar beam done to death. Um, I, I think, you know, that's a, that's quite a good show and tell for the modifiers on that. OK, next thing I want to build is what I call our floating tooltip. Now, um, if I have a look at, sorry, the um, hotspots, you'll see we've got hotspots selected. So we see the default system tooltips. All right. So even though you can do some um, uh, formatting with these, I mean, we can do a lot more in CSS and, and whatnot, but you can also uh, create your own. And because the other thing is as well is these tooltips are always under the cursor. Um, so if you want a tooltip above the cursor, then you're going to do or need to do what we're going to be doing next. OK, so I'm going to open up the skin editor and I like to make it uh, select. So I show off grid or so off canvas elements. This makes this next job a little bit easier. What I'm going to do is select a text box, uh, draw a text box and add it to the skin. All right. I'm going to, uh, it's now its width is 100 and its height is 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set its location to minus 50. 
I don't know if you can see it, there's a yellow line here, which represents the edge of the skin canvas. So you can now see the text box is halfway through. And I'm gonna set its uh, Y to minus 50 as well. So in now you can see the edge of the canvas. Now, when we're looking at modifiers um, uh, in, the, in, in the tree, um, if they're the parent element, they're gonna be taking their position uh, from the very top left of the skin canvas. So it's gonna assume that's where my mouse is. So basically with those settings, where my mouse is right now, that's where the text box will be. All right, so when it shows that that's where it's gonna be. Okay, so what I need then to do is tidy this up by let's just call it uh, um, ooh, tool tip. Okay, let's keep the skin nice and tidy. That's always a good thing to do. I'm gonna want it to show the hotspots title. So I'm gonna select the text and I'm gonna use this little button here, which is insert placeholder. So I'm gonna insert the placeholder for the hotspots title. So this now will show the hotspot title when we roll over it. And to make the text box follow the mouse, I'm gonna use the modifiers. So I'm going to use move X with mouse X. Okay, now what I like to do is highlight something and I use the keyboard shortcuts all the time. So command C, command V, um, it's obviously control C and control V on the uh, PC. That just leaves me to double click and I can just change the move mouse Y with, uh, sorry, move Y with uh, mouse Y now. Um, you'll see me do this an awful lot when I'm doing actions because it's just a lot quicker to do. You can actually just do the full click it and go through this, but yeah, you'll see me do an awful lot. Also, when I press a key, you'll see that the keys I'm pressing come up here as well. Okay, so with that said, if I open up the preview, uh, skin preview button now, live preview, you'll see that that text box is following my mouse. There it is, how cool is that? So let's just close this. Because it's got the placeholder, when I hover over a polygon that's got the uh, text, you'll see that it comes up. There you go. All right, so that's, that's a bit annoying that we've got both text boxes showing. So that's quite simple. As I said, what we do is look under the hotspots and just deselect it. So we've now deselected um, the text box or the system text box. Okay, so if I now export that, you will now only see the that one. All right, okay, and you can see now, obviously it's always showing. So how do I deal with that? Right, well, what I'm gonna do is select the tooltip text box and I'm gonna deselect it's visible, visible. So it's, no, so it's not visible all the time. And I'm now gonna give it the action that when we um, uh, mouse enter, all right, um, I'm going to uh, visibility show the element self. And again, as I said before, I'm gonna do keyboard copy and paste. And when we mouse leave, visibility hide self. Okay, now this is a bit odd because it's following the um, uh, mouse, that mouse is never gonna enter into it, right? So what is going on? Right, well, I want to link this to the um, polygon hotspots, all right? So how we do that is here we have this thing called a hotspot proxy ID. And what you would do, let's just close this um, and show you. If I click on this polygon hotspot, you'll see if I go to its, the properties panel, it says poly 01, all right? Now, if I was to go back here to the tooltip and go back to the hotspot proxy ID, if I typed in poly 01, when I mouse over the poly 01 polygon hotspot, any actions will get actioned. So when I enter the polygon hotspot, you'll see it. When I leave it, it will hide it, brilliant but that means it'll only work for Polygon 01. So that means I'll have to name all of them Polygon 01. Or I can put a wildcard in here, which is the asterisk. So now this wildcard means this will work with any hotspot. So it can be a point hotspot, it can be a Polygon hotspot, but as soon as the mouse enters it, it will action these actions. So let's just see that working. All right, so as I hover over that, there is our tooltip now hiding and showing. All right, so that's their website one and there's the information one.
Okay, the text box itself doesn't look particularly great. So what I could do um, is just select it. I could get rid of the background. I could get rid of the, uh, the, the, the border, change the text to being white. Okay, so that's, I know I'm doing this fairly quickly, but we've covered this so many times um, in webinars. So now you can just see we've got the entrance. If I hold the mouse still, you can see we've got that nice little bit of text. We can obviously change the text in CSS. Um, we actually have webinars that talk about this. So you can restyle it and you can add a drop shadow and et cetera, et cetera. So you can really style this text as well. Okay, so that's basically our tool tip coming in and out. And that's using the two modifiers um, let's just go back and just have a look at those. So the modifiers then were on. Um, so we, as as we move, um, so we want to move the element in the X direction and the source is going to be the mouse. So as the mouse moves X, the element moves X with it. And this is why it was uh, it was important to set up the position of the text box, because if I was to set it to zero, zero, the text box and mouse would be on the top left hand corner so let's prove a point let's have a look and if i go to that you'll see it's flickering about because here we go it's it's really struggling the reason why that's struggling is because the text box is an active element okay within the skin so if the, if i move the mouse and it goes into the text box the text box is slightly more forward than the polygon hotspot. So therefore the mouse is no longer in the hotspot. So it hides. As soon as it hides, the mouse can get uh, can actually be inside the polygon hotspot. So it will show. And of course, when it shows, it disconnects again. So you get this, it looks like it's not there. But to get around that, what we would do is say, right, well, let's not make the hotspot an active element then. Let's make it permeable. And we will no longer see this type of odd behavior. And there it is. There you go. All right. So that's pretty cool. Right. OK. Um, now I'm going to do something similar. So I'm actually going to delete this text box. Um, but before I go any further, I'll do another shout out and see if we have any questions. Um, Karen, any questions? Doesn't look like it from this end, but I'm, I'm, I'm no, not sure. No questions. Again, that was pretty clear. Right, and okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> and Ishvan says, yeah, it's still clear. <laughs> Thanks, guys. My cup of tea is going to get yeah. freezing before anybody asks any questions where I can drink it. You don't realize that. <laughs> right. OK, so that's that's what we call a floating tooltip. Um, now, as I said, you can modify these with, you know, CSS. You can modify it with CSS actually in the element itself or within the Pano 2BR style sheets. Right. OK. Um, oh, we have a question. Oh, go on quick. I'll, I'll grab me tea. Go on. <laughs> Thanks, Angela, for your question. Um, uh, she's asking, uh, why did the text move to the right when you changed um, into grid? I think when you moved the text box in the upper left corner at zero, zero, why did the text move to the right of the Right, map? okay. Right, okay. Um, if you can imagine the skin canvas, it's the, the mouse's home position is position zero, zero here. All right, so if I had a text box, okay, and we'll add it, and I set that to zero, zero, you'll see that the mouse in the text box, if I put the mouse in the top left-hand corner, the text box is in the top left-hand corner. You can see where the text is and where that, so on the output, if I was to mouse over the polygon hotspot, you would see what's actually on the screen now. Now, the reason why you saw with the text to one side is because I made the um, background transparent. If I just give this, uh, just quickly do this. So mouse, thanks, move mouse. Okay, copy, paste. You can see how fast, once you start to get to hang of this, you can see how quick and easy some of this stuff is. I know I've been doing this for a while, but yeah. Right, so theoretically then you can see that the mouse uh, that text box is exactly where that mouse was. So top left hand corner of the skin, and that's where it was. So for me to position the mouse better or, or the text box or the tooltip text um, better. So not one to say better. Is that the right word? Probably not. But to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. That's a good one. Right. Um, 
all I did was say, right, well, if the text box is 100 pixels wide, if I do minus 50, that now puts my mouse in the middle of it. So let's just have a look. And that should show you that. There you go. So the mouse is now in, in the middle of it, but still on the top. The reason being is because the mouse is now here. This is the edge of the skin canvas. So my mouse is now here. All right. So now what I want to do is move that text box up. So I'm going to go minus 50 pixels and you can now see the edge of the skin, uh, skin canvas is this yellow line. So my mouse is now here in relation to now this text box position. All right. So if I now close, save and show this text box again, you'll see where it is in relation to the mouse. So it's, it's the position inside of the skin canvas determines where the text box is going to be positioned um, eventually. I mean, I could have had the text box um, the same level as the mouse, but over to the left of it. So the text box comes out to the left, or we could have it come out to the right or underneath. It's entirely up to you, but you've just got to remember that the position of the mouse is always X, Y, zero, zero. So you move the text box in relation to that. Okay, did that answer that question? Yeah, uh, Angela says that makes sense. Thank you. Um, in the meantime, um, Istvan has uh, presented us with a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's saying, I assume this behavior would also work with different images showing up instead of text. Oh, absolutely. When hovering over a hotspot. So um, we hover over the entrance and uh, a close-up image of a door would show. But when we hover over the tower clock, we would see an image of the clock. So it actually, so I, I'm, I'm covering all this on custom cursors coming Ooh. soon, coming oh. to a computer screen near you soon. As I say, <laughs> now that's 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 next up, and and you'll see how you could modify that for your own needs. Um, right. But yeah, that's that's so, next. It's funny. So, your 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 assumption is correct. Yeah. He yes. Says, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's Jump in the gun. Good. Right. Okay. Any more? That's it. <laughs> right. Cool. Right. This one um, is quite good. I think let's, let's, this is, this is, this is creative. I like this one. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a custom cursor and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to add some uh, custom SVG images that I've made in Photoshop and we're going to be using these instead of the mouse instead. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is fetch these images so Pano 2 VR can use them. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab and underneath this, we can, um, if I just drag this over, we can add, add files. So under my resources, I've got these custom images that I've made. Now, so that is going to be my new mouse cursor. And this is going to be one for nodes. I've already labeled them up so it makes this a little bit easier and quicker. So I'm going to use that as well for nodes. I'm going to use that for the information hotspot and any web links are going to be using that cursor. All right. So I'm actually changing cursors. All right. So that's, that's, that's quite, quite good. So there's my four cursors. So the reason, right. Okay. And the other thing is as well, is you can see that it's now under assets. So to actually get to these um, uh, graphics, any file names would now be assets under, uh, you know, so lowercase, depending on what flavor of OS you're on, um, either forward slash or backslash, and it will be mouse.svg or node.svg, and that's how we get to them. Okay, so that's that. So that's those images now part of Pano 2 VR. Okay, so let's think about this. I'm going to add a container, and I'm going to call this container mouse. Okay. Um, oh, actually, mouse con. That's what we'll do. Call it mouse con. And I'm going to make this 16. Uh, oh, too much. Uh, 16 by 16 pixels. All right. Now, again, I want my mouse. I want this to track the mouse. So I'm going to do exactly the same as what we did with the floating tooltip. But I want my mouse exactly in the middle. All right. Of this. So I'm going to position this. Uh, if it's 16 pixels big to get to the middle, it's going to be minus eight by minus eight. And that now puts 
you can see the edge of the skin canvas by this yellow line. So now my mouse is going to be now in the middle of that. There we go. So that's that. Now, of course, I want this to move with the mouse. So we'll do what we did before. And that's uh, move X with mouse X. Click OK. I'm going to do my famous copy and paste. So it's nice and quick. And we're going to do move Y or mouse Y as well. So move Y with mouse Y. OK. Now, like, like what happened before, um, this mouse would now be inside this. Now, a container is permeable by default. So I don't have to worry about it. All right. It's permeable by default. Um, and what I'm going to do now. Can you explain what permeable means before you go on? Sorry. All right. Okay. Um, basically, um, uh, and if I add an element, if I, okay, if I add a um, container to the, or container, a rectangle to the skin, right? Save, close. I can drag the panorama around, but if the mouse is in this rectangle, the rectangle is active and I can't, I'm actually clicking on the rectangle and not the panorama. All right. If I don't need to do anything with the rectangle, it doesn't need to be an active element. If I make it permeable, that means it's visible, but not active. So in other words, I can click in it and still move the panorama. But if this had any actions, I wouldn't be able to use any actions with it. Okay. So that's what the permeable bit, bit's doing. Now, of course, I've actually got a transparent um, container under my mouse. If that container was, um, if that um, uh, container was active, all right, let's just do that. You'll see, no matter what I try to do with my mouse, I can't click and drag because I've now got a container in the way of the panorama. But because the container comes default, permeable, it's allowing me to mouse click through it and drag the panorama. And there we go. All right, so that's basically the permeable bit um, working. Did, uh, are you happy with that? Uh, can I? <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, no, I just, yeah, thanks. I just wanted to explain that for anyone who didn't, um, who right, okay, wasn't right. uh, familiar with the permeable. Right, okie dokie. Right, okay. So, next step then, I want to show these external images. So, I'm going to use the external or draw external image. Click in here. Now, I know that I need to have the size of this uh, 50 by 33 pixels. And the only reason I know this is because of the size of the SVG images. Okay. Um, um, now the SVG images are quite big, but when they're scaled down um, uh, uh, with the same aspect ratio, they will actually get to 50 by 33 pixels. All right. So that's the only reason why I know this size. And it's only because of the custom images I'm using. Otherwise you would create your own one, the size of whatever the images are that you want. All right. Um, because it's just a mouse pointer, this is plenty big enough. Okay. I'm going to make this a child element now of the, um, container so it moves around with the mouse and what i'm going to do is set that to the center so anchor center and set the position zero zero so the mouse is about there all right now if i set top um set that to zero let's see what that's going to do um okay so let's uh, yeah that's that right okay so and i'm going to just going to rename this let's just call this mouse okay so this is actually going to be my mouse image even though that it's in a container and i want it to show the mouse svg so as i said it's now going to be in the folder assets forward slash mouse dot svg now if i now close save and output this it's blank all right. Now you're probably going to say, well, I can still see the system mouse, which is fine. And I'm now seeing a white box that's moving around with the mouse right now. The reason being is I actually want, because I said the SVG images are quite large and I want them to scale down to the minimum size that they can to fit inside this. So when I do that, you should see them now scale down 
And there is that mouse pointer. And it's very close to the system pointer, which is what you want. I don't know if you can see that, um, but yeah, that's exactly what I want you to see. Now, obviously what I don't want you to see is the white background of the external loader. So I'm going to deselect that and I'm going to remove any border with that. So we're going to say close, save. And all you can see now is the system mouse. There it is. And the, um, the SVG image, which is going to be my new pointer. Okay, now I'm going to leave the system pointer visible for a second or two, um, or, for, or for the minute until we get a little bit further in to the project. And then, uh, and then what we'll be doing is hiding the system mouse per, uh, 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 pointer so you only see our custom one. Okay, so what I want to do now is control what this mouse um, shows, which images it shows. Now, there's a couple of thoughts to this. If you're only showing one or two images, you could have actually put your images directly in the skin. But because I want to show several different ones, I'm going to load them externally depending on what the mouse hovers over, okay? So I'm going to add a container, and I'm gonna call this mouse control. All right, because we need some actions to, to do some bits. And as we did before, I'm going to give it the hotspot proxy um, of the wildcard, because when I hover over any hotspot, polygon or whatever, I want it to, to execute or action any actions in here. Right, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to say on mouse leave, I want to set the value to the, um, uh, and the value is going to be assets forward slash mouse dot SVG, all right? So that's, that's the first action and I'm gonna have the target go to mouse. Now I could have selected mouse from here, but it's just as quick just to type in M and it finds the first one. First, first thing I've got set to M, right, which is mouse. Now, why did I do that? Well, when I enter, I'm actually going to change the mouse cursor when I enter a hotspot. But when I leave that hotspot, I want to change the cursor back to being the mouse. So that's the very first action we do. We've got to you know, forward think a little bit, say, right, I'm entering something. I want to change it when I come out. OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another action. And that's going to be mouse enter. And again, I'm going to set the value. And the value is going to be assets forward slash and i'm going to now change the image to node dot svg and again i want that to affect the mouse which is this external loader so i'm setting the value to the external loader to show this node svg in the assets folder okay so if i save and close this all right it's not working cool Let's have a look why it's not working. So on mouse enter set, right, okay. It's not working because I need to, um, let's have a look. Uh, I'm just gonna need to look and make sure that I've got in the output, I've got the assets and I've got mouse SVG node. So it's node that I wanted, right, okay. So let's just make sure that under the control, we've got yeah assets node SVG and we're targeting the mouse. Martin, so that, what about mar, uh, mouse leave at the action at the top there? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just that, I'm just looking. Okay. So on mouse leave, we are doing that. So basically, what should happen is when we mouse enter, we should see uh, that and leave. But what I'm going to do here. All right, is on this um, uh, polygon hotspot, I'm going to put in the description node. All right. And what I'm going to say is that in the mouse control, right, my, my little, now I know this is going to get, so what I'm going to do is add an action filter to say this should only happen when the hotspot description equals node, right? So it should only activate this or action this when it's on node. 
Now I'm a little bit concerned because this should be working. So I'll mouse enter, set the value to assets. Now I have spelled that right, haven't I? AWS node.svg and to the external loader. All right. Okay, so that's that that's all working. And uh, it's not okay, so let's um, let's just change this to no just in case I've done something silly with the with the graphic. So there's the node, that's the one it should be changing to. Ah, and you can see when I moused out of that, it got rid of it. So that's that part of it's working. So as far as de so as far as debugging that, that's working. So what should happen is on mouse enter, we're going to set the value to node, which we're going to do. And then mouse leave, we're going to set it back to that. And on the mouse itself, what I will do is just remove all of that. And let's just see if that's going to work. Okay. No. Ah, right. Bingo. I know what I've done wrong. Anyone got, I'll try, I'll, I'm going to finish off my tea. I'm going to give everyone two seconds to see if anyone can answer what I've done wrong. And that uh, includes, <laughs> and that includes Thomas. <laughs> um, Luca had said uh, a little bit ago, uh, um, and I don't, I don't quite understand it, but hopefully I get the, the sentence right, Luca, sorry. Um, Martin, before you, you before leave the behavior to hotspot. Right, nice try, but it doesn't win you the teddy bear. Uh, um, okay. Right. So John says, should it be assets slash resources slash node dot svg? No. Okay. Michael asks, isn't it a question of order? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Let's 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 break into this before we waste too much time. As I say, I've got some other bits to do, but. Basically, what I did is that the external image loader is not permeable. So the external image loader is in the way of the mouse pointer and the polygon hotspot. So it can't see it. If I now make the external loader permeable, the mouse can now travel over the top of the polygon hotspot. And this by all means should work. So let's just put everything back the way I had it. So assets, uh, that's about right, okay. So that was gonna be um, mouse, that's its default, mouse SVG. So that's what it should show, oh, SVG. So that's what it should show on um, system or project open. Okay, and the mouse control then is going to do, um, so as we hover over the polygon, because I say, this is the whole reason why this didn't work is because the mouse can't get to the polygon because this external loader was in the way. So theoretically now, all my troubles should be gone. Here we go, off, and it's all working. So we've now got the mouse working, all right? So there's the default on the external loader, which is that pointer. And when we hover into the polygon, because we've got um, the polygon set um, uh, with the, wild card we're changing to the node all right now of course what would happen if i took out this um you know mouse control if i took out the um action filter all right so let's get rid of that delete what would happen because it's a wild card this would happen with every single polygon you'll see. And I don't want that to happen. I actually want different images. So to stop that happening, what I did was say, right, I've added a description called node in the in this polygon hotspot. And then in the skin under mouse control, I only want this to load the node when the hotspot has the description of node. Now, does that make sense? I'm sure it does. So theoretically, say so theoretically, what it will definitely, not theoretically, it will now only show on hotspots that only have node in the description 
and of course nowhere else all right that's that's pretty good now the thing is is that my mouse pointer is getting in the way and it's and it's a bit distracting what i need to do is get rid of this mouse pointer all right in the panorama now the way i'm going to do this it, it, it's you can find this on the internet um i'm going to go to um safari um he says let's open up a new window and i'm going to type in um hide mouse in web page i know you can't see it because those things are and hit return now you can see I've already done it gone here before. It's I went to uh, uh, Stack Overflow. I was looking through here to find what I wanted, and eventually I found the one I want, which is this one. All right. So on the whole of the of the whole of the HTML page, the cursor is going to be none. And when you use the important, this basically means that no other CSS is going to interfere with this. All right. So I'm going to copy this line. Now, I'm not a code junkie. I, I would never have known to type that out, but you know I can use a search engine and I sort of know what I want to do. So what I'm gonna do here is go into the skin editor because obviously the skin has its embedded style sheet and I'm just going to add it to the bottom. Now, I'm not sure if it needs to be added to the top or it needs to be added to the bottom or it doesn't matter where it's added as long as it's in there. But when I put it into the bottom, click okay. That is now telling the HTML page not to show the system cursor and there it is it's gone you can only see now the custom one that we've added all right so that's that's it so you know we're swapping out images now to take this a little bit further what i'm going to do is under the mouse control i'm going to add another i'm going to copy and paste another one of those and we're going to say the uh, mouse value da, 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 and i'm going to use the um let's do web um and that's going to go to the mouse Right now, the thing is I want to show, let's delete this um, action filter here because this is now a different um, call. So when I enter a, a, a node a polygon hotspot, I'm showing the node pointer. And when I enter a web, I want to show the web one. Now, um, the web will now be the same deal. If I select web, you can see that I've already set it up. So I'm now gonna type in web here, okay save so now um if i hover over nothing's happening and it's happening i'm using the web all over the place that's because i removed that action filter so when if i go back to mouse control there's the action to show the web and i'm going to say only show this when the hotspots description has web in it all right so that's now how I'm displaying the correct mouse. So here on anything to do with node, we get the people. When I go to web, we now get the web one showing. And you can just carry on doing that for all the different ones. The only oddity is gonna be for um, this hotspot, which is gonna show the uh, information because the information, um, let's do this actually, I won't, oh, let's, let's do this. I am gonna go a little bit over on here guys, uh, over the hour, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So here we're going to do mouse enter set value and I'm going to type in info. All right. And again for the mouse. All right. Um, I'll, I'll leave the action filter for the minute. But if we have a look at this information polygon hotspot, you'll see that I'm already using the description text field for something else. So I can't put in a link in there or, or any text in there for the action filter. But what I don't use for an information pop-up is the target text field. So this is where you would normally either have, you know, the page open, you know, in the same page or a separate page, but I can use this. So I'm just gonna type in here, info, all right? So that's where I'm putting it in here because this, as I say, it's an information hotspot. I'm using all these text fields, but I can use this empty one. So if I go back into the skin under mouse control, I can say on the action filter, that if I go placeholders, hotspots, target needs to be info. So if I enter a hotspot that's got info in the target text field, display that graphic. So let's have a look and see that working. So here it is for the node. There it is now showing for the information. 
and there it is now showing for the web. So you can really go to town on this. I could have put in, you know, other things as well. I mean, let's just, um, how are we doing for time? Not good, but uh, never mind. Um, if I hide, let's hide up a lot of this stuff. Um, I could add a text box, stick it there. Um, let's just call this tooltip. Um, so this is my mouse. And I'm going to drag that under here. In fact, what I want to do is have the mouse cursor above it. I'm going to have the tooltip underneath the mouse. Um, again, you can position it wherever you want. And because it's a child of that, it's going to be zero. And that's that. And again, what I would do is under mouse control, um, I'm going to give it the action of mouse enter. I'm going to, I'm going to use the alpha. I'm going to change the element alpha to uh, 100% five seconds for the tool tip. So tool tip, there we go. And of course, when I mouse copy and paste, when I mouse leave, I'm going to set that back to alpha zero. So it now fades in and out. So I'm going to select the tool tip text box. You can see it's select so it's visible and the alpha is one. I'm going to set the alpha is zero, but that's its starting position. All right, for the tooltip text box as well, I want it to display the hotspots text. So I'm going to select the text, use the insert placeholder under hotspots. I want it to show the title. Click, close, save. And we should now have the thing fading in and out. There we go with the graphic. All right, so that's quite cool. Um, what I could have also done in the mouse control as well is, you know, um, as I did, I think I did on my uh, a little, um, uh, a little uh, GIF I put in with the Facebook post, I changed also the alpha. So when you mouse entered, not alpha, the, the angle. So when you mouse enter, it, it put it to a different angle. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically all the bits and pieces for changing and having your own custom point hotspot or your, your, your custom cursor. There you go. So that's that one. Right. So is there any questions on that at all? Um, not on that, but I think we have to rewind. Uh, we have a few questions on. Yeah. Okay. Ishvan has a question, but like, uh, let's, I want to go back about a half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, David sure. had asked, uh, is it possible to switch permeable with an action or a variable? I would go as far as to say, now, um, for Thomas and Christoph, the, the, our, our, our two main people, I'm on the Karen, Christoph and Thomas channel on, on Slack. So if you want to talk to me and tell me I'm doing something wrong, please do that, use that channel. But as far as I'm aware, um, there's no actions for this. But like everything, um, there's probably a chunk of JavaScript that you could use to do that with. Um, um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Oh, Thomas is typing. The teletype is going. <laughs> I've hit a raw, <laughs> a raw nerve. No. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's a bit of JavaScript you can use. Uh, uh, yeah, may work with JavaScript. All right. So I don't think we've ever had to do it before. I don't think we've ever had that request, and it may work with JavaScript. But certainly there is no action for it. Okay, so thanks, Mark, for the question. Or not, that wasn't Mark, David, I think it was. Um, but Mark's question is, uh, rather than write your, your, your text in uh, the, the description, could you use um, a tag instead? So you know, you're, you're adding... Um, into target, you know, link target, uh, description. What happens if all of those fields are already taken? Right, okay. Um, that's a good one. You can't use a tag because a tag affects the whole panorama. And like this, this is a single panorama and I've got, you know, um, a node hotspot, you know, an info hotspot and a web hotspot. So you need something that's local to the hotspot here. All right, so it has to be something you're using in this hotspot. I'm just choosing something that's not being used and using that for my purposes. So here, where I'm not using the description for a, you know, a point hotspot, oh, sorry, not point, but a node hotspot, I'm using the description there for it. And info, 
I mean, you know, just be mindful when you're you're building it. But if you've used it all up, then yeah, <laughs> version seven peoples. But no, um, yeah, yeah, you know, obviously there's limitations, and you have to use something here um, uh, because you need a way of telling, you know, the the skin what hotspot you're, you know, moving the mouse into and what image to show. So yeah. Right. So, um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't read on. Marker also said, or type, I think, um, but I think it's all the same with, uh, uh, what you explained. You have to target the specific, uh, hotspot, um, and not, rather than globally. I mean, it's probably possible. He says, is it possible? I mean, if you titled all of your website hotspots website, then you could use that. Yeah. So you could use the word website, yeah, as um, the trigger to uh, in in the action filter. So you could use. I mean, I'm using the description because it's the only one not being used in mm -hmm. this particular one into a node one, but you know, uh, or rather a website one. But you know, you could use. You know, I can use the word, I can use the description, you know, um, I'm putting these in as shortcuts. Um, but, you know, there's no reason why you could say, right, well, you'll use the, you know, if all the titles of all the websites, hotspots was website, I could use that in the action filter. Mm -hmm. So I could leave then the description box clear for doing something else. But, you know, but if you start down that road, then every single website hotspot must have the title website or as it won't work. Yeah. So. So again, you, you still have to pay attention to how you plan things when you're, you know, really think about how you want these things to work and what you need and what you don't need. And absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark clarified type as URL or yeah. Type. Yeah, I tend not to use URL web links, uh, the, the uh, URL text field. I think what he's meaning, um, the the actual polygon type. Uh, oh, type, type, change, okay. Yeah, if you can target the actual type. Well, uh, I don't think it really matters for this um, because if I go to change that to node, um, just, yeah, it's... Yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you're still in the same situation where you need, um, uh, oh, apparently, apparently the type is not available as placeholder. So no, <laughs> can't do that. And that's for the man who wrote it. All right. <laughs> so that's no, but no, it's, um, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so that's with, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> V7, yeah, as I said, V7 people. I'm, sorry, I'm, <laughs> sorry, uh, I, I'm giggling because uh, Martin and I are both looking at the same channel and, and both reading what uh, Thomas is writing to us. And obviously, we didn't know what he meant. It's like Thomas needs to type a bit faster because it's quiet <laughs> until he does. Right. All right. Okay. Um, is there any more? Because I've got yes, one thing yes. I want to show. Yes, um, there are a few more questions. Right. Okay. Um, let's let, let's yeah. have them. Come on. Bring them on. Let's go. Yeah, sorry. I have the giggles today. Got places um, to go, people. Come on. <laughs> Ishvan um, is asking, what happens to these mouse enterly functions on mobile? Or are they just ignored? No, it's it's the, it's the same. If, like, if your finger, I mean, if your fit, the thing is, it will work, but it's like when you, but it's like having a click. I mean, you're going to see it when you touch it. And then when you release it, like if you, like if you tap it, you'll see it quickly appear and disappear. And then you'll, and then you'll action it. So if it's to open up, a, I don't know, go to another node, it will go to another node. If you press and hold your finger on there, you'll see the, the graphic. And then if you slide your finger off, because there's no lever such, you're not taking your finger off it, um, then then hopefully it won't change nodes. But yeah, I mean, touch screens are a different beastie. I mean, mm. you know, enter and leave. Um, you're basically touching it. I mean, we're, 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 like if you have a button with a, uh, with a tool tip, when you touch it, you'll see the tool tip, even though the tool tip is enter only. But when you, of course, when you touch it, you'll also execute the click action as well. So yeah, it's just a timing issue. Okay. And the last question from Ishvan is asking, could you filter with, um, in quotation marks, uh, has the word 
So can you include words or, um, or not use words? <laughs> the answer is seven. <laughs> version seven. In version seven, we've, we, we, you can, um, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. You can add custom fields here. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're, we are um, currently watching some more information come in. On the teletype, yeah. <laughs> I really want a sound effect of like the old... Of the old teletypes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm just uh, right. Okay, I'm gonna well, I'm gonna go on from here because uh, I've got fine. one I've got one thing I want to show. Uh, one more thing I want to show that is really good. Um, and I think some people might find this more useful than anything else apart from the radar boot. Right. Okay. So what is this? And it's going to be um, uh, the logo at the bottom of your like the Nadia patch. Now, some people don't want a patch, but they want their company names there. Okay, so um, if you if you put a patch there, the patch becomes part of the image and it will rotate with the image. Okay, so we all know that. Um, but what if you don't want it to rotate with the image? Well, the idea is that you add a hotspot, right? You'll add a hotspot to the ground floor. And in the hotspots properties, um, I'm just going to give it the ID of uh, logo. All right. And um, I'm going to make sure that it's uh, you know, pan angle is zero and it's set to, I want it straight down. So it's going to be minus 90 degrees. So it's straight down. So that's my, my, my hotspot. Now I'm just using that as a placeholder to anchor other things. All right. So, so the actual images that I'm using are going to be anchored to this point hotspot. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the skin and I'm going to just hide everything really for the minute because I don't really need to see anything. All right. And what I'm going to do is go to image. And I'm going to go to my little box of resources. I'm going to add the ring that I want to show. There it is. No, it's a bit big, but I'll sort there in a second. Then I'm going to add our little, little our, our, I can't talk now, our little gnome guy. There he is. And add that to the skin as well. Okay. And what I'm going to do is add a hotspot template. This is what is going to be anchored to the hotspot we've just added in the editor. All right. So I'm going to click on the hotspot. And we're going to call this logo, All right? Okay, so I'm now using this hotspot template on that particular point hotspot because the ID matches this one. All right, so oh, rather not not the ID, the skin ID will match this one. Not done it yet, so it will match it. So there's the point hotspot, and what I'm going to do is select both of these images, and I'm going to make them. They're a bit big, as I say. Make them about a hundred pixels in size. All right, so that's how big they are. And then what I'm going to do is anchor them in the center and drag them on top of my point hotspot. All right, so let's just anchor, sorry, um, don't need to anchor that. So these two, I'm going to anchor them to the center, which I've just did, and I'm gonna set the position to zero, zero. So they're now all nice and tidy in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna set close, save. I'm gonna click on the point hotspot, and I'm going to say I want to use the skin ID or I want to use the hotspot template logo bang. All right. So now I'm going to be definitely using that um, hotspot template with this particular point hotspot because I could have, you know, point hotspots for doing nodes, pop up images or pop up information boxes, whatever. So I don't want the wrong hotspot template being used. So you add your point hotspot and you tell that point hotspot which template in the skin to use. All right, so that's that one. Okay, so if I click save and let's export this, what we should have now is our little logo. Here it is. Now, so what does this have to do with modifiers? Well, if I zoom in and out, as you'll see, that's not really, really good, is it? Because it's 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 not zooming with it. So what I could do is go to the hotspot template. Here's a modifier. And with the modifier, I'm going to say scale. And we're going to use the one tan field of view. Don't know what that means, but I will say is that now that element or that hotspot is now going to um, scale with the image. All right. So let's have a look at that. And we've got this now moving on. All right. That's pretty cool. Right. The thing that you may notice if I just... As I move the panorama down, you'll see that the floor is distorting, but this isn't, all right? 
Okay, I've got my text box, but no, not to worry. Um, you'll see that the floor is not distort, uh, distorting. Um, now, to make this look a little bit more pleasing, what we could do, if I go back to the skin, I could say, right, well, let's not use that um, modifier and let's use 3D distortion. But that puts us back to where we were if I'd just used a patch. You know, it does it doesn't stay upright, all right? And of course, if I was to zoom out, it does, however, distort with the image. So what can I do about this? Right, well, we can use a modifier. So as an example, if I select this image and go to modifiers, we can say, rotate it with pan, okay? So now our little chappy in the middle, our little logo stays upright, okay? And now when I zoom out, you'll see that the whole thing still distorts. So it looks like it's pinned to the panorama, but it's not. You can see it stays upright. Now you can see I didn't do that to the outer ring. So the outer ring still rotates around. So that's quite a cool effect. If you did want the outer ring to stay upright as well, you could just give it literally the same. So if I click on that, like always, I can select that keyboard shortcut to copy, go to this one, click keyboard shortcut to paste, and that will give me the same effect. All right. Now I'll give a um, heads up to a guy on our forum called Neil. Uh, somebody asked, was asking the questions um, and he came up with this idea because, um, uh, you know, the question was, you know, how can you have a, a, a Lego upright? Um, but he also, um, in 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 the question which was missed was but also looked or appeared to be 3d distorted and that was the way to do it you do see a little tiny kick in there obviously because you know the the players working out which ways up and reading the data from the panorama and trying to keep it upright but even so it, it's it's a really cool effect i prefer it in this case because the ring has pano 2 vr written or garden gnome written around it there's no need for it to be um, uh, always upright. And it's a really cool effect for that logo or, or the actual ring to be, you know, pinned to the panorama, I think. And I think that's just a really, really good effect. So, yeah, that's uh, another way to use a modifier. And that's the rotate modifier um, to move the little logo. Right. Well, that's, I think is that i've got nothing else really i want to um uh, uh, say about that i don't know if there's any more questions um but that's just a nice little thing uh, to finish up on i think that's really cool uh, there's no questions uh but i really like that little uh little hint there yeah no as i say it was um yeah that was as i say it was a it was a, it was a, uh, a forum post mm -hmm. and, and it was like any other forum post i'm um, just saying i oh, want the, the the logo up right um but you know it was like it's like always uh, it wasn't really uh, detailed um or evident that what the guy actually wanted but we were going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and you know i'd sort of looked into the forum said, all right use the hotspot blah 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 and then when i went back into the forum neil would actually um, found more information he from the guy and, and, and added this. And I just mm. thought, you That's know, cool. wow. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's mm -hmm. an absolute good idea. So, you know, give, give credit where it's due. Yeah. Uh, Which so. is another uh, nice reminder. If you're not on the forum, um, the, the forum is also a nice place for information and tips and tricks, uh, you know, not just the Facebook user group, but also on the forum. So, um, and if you need an account, just send us an email at support at G-G-N-O-M-E and we'll get you an account if you don't have one already. Um, Dylan has a question. Can you add the scale back to it and keep the 3D distortion to the logo? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. What, like, can you, mm -hmm. is there a reason why you have to have one on and one off? Like if you, if you turn on the 3D distortion? I don't get the question, sorry. Uh, go back into this. Can you add the scale back to it and keep the 3D distortion to the logo? Meaning um, if you go back to 
Uh, oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. You... Right. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. If I, if I, yeah, if I do that. Um, so basically what you're saying is don't use. Well, have I got this wrong? I don't know. Hang on. So are you saying don't use 3D distortion and use the modifier instead? No. Can you use both of them? Why would you? Yeah, I don't know why. And that's the... <laughs> just like you know, because the idea of the of the modifier initially, when we wasn't using three D distortion, this is the one with the scale. I was trying to get the the, the image to scale with 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 field of view. All right, but mm -hmm. if you three D distort it, it's pinned, literally pinned to the panorama, so it automatically scales with the with the pano. So you know, there's 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 really no need to do that. I think it would be a bit overkill, to be honest. Um, no, but, I don't. That was not a silly question. I think it's a. Uh, it was not. No, not it's no. It's uh, it's it's a good yeah. question. Yeah. Um. Because could we? Could we? Could we? Could we? I'm just going to try and break it. So if I do, that's fine. Um. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna break this. I'm gonna do something really odd and see if it, if it would do what I want it to do. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can imagine people's hands. No, it didn't. Okay. Once it's been 3D distorted by the looks, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it breaks it. All right. Yeah. Thought it would. <laughs> yeah, it's popping all over the place. Yeah, not a good idea. But it's good to see, though. It's it's mm -hmm. good to see that if you do one or the other, that's fine. Try and do both. And that's going to work. Yeah. No. Gonna... Okay. And, but maybe that's it, too. Uh, maybe... Uh, 3D distortion is new to you. 3D distortion will do exactly what Martin said. It it it, it will pin that element to the um, to the panorama and will distort with it. So and yeah. So if you're not familiar with it, then that's the that's the reason. So. Um, but Thomas is saying, but I could throw it in a container, and make it work. Oh. Really. Okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's hide that. Um, and so, what, oh, I don't know. I, I, I really, really don't. So, I actually, what, I tell you what, I'm struggling with is why I would do this anyway. Um, um, but I, I think I, I think I know where Thomas is going with this. He thinks oh, I think so. Let's just do a container, draw a container around that. All right. So I've now got a container inside the image. All right. Okay. Um, throw it in a container to make it work, keep it the same size. Ah, I see. So if I throw that into a container and do the uh, scale, um, what am I doing? One term field of view, do the minus. Um, I'm hoping what we're going to be doing here is, I know I'm only doing part of it. I'm not doing the whole image. Oh, okay. No, that's uh... <laughs> all right. Okay, use tan field of view. All right. Okay, let's let's do that. Uh, use tan field of view. Okay, so theoretically, yes, that's keeping the right. Okay, so using that, we can keep the gnome guy the same size and he also distorts but keeping him the same size all right well that's different oh, <laughs> we learn something new all the time yeah i uh, i i, I yeah. why but it's good it's can good you, that you can <laughs> can you put your mouse over the you, you see you see the tooltip there corolla is asking how do you hide the empty text box when hovering over the logo right okay in the skin um the um Cheers, the um, uh, um, um, um um in the skin we've got the mouse control that says show and hide the uh, text box on 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 mouse over right so change the element so what i could have done here is um only do it on certain um uh, uh on certain um elements because obviously it's acting with all point hotspots. So what I could have done is um, given it a, uh, I don't know, let's just put in uh, no. All right, so let's just put no there. 
and then in the in the mouse control. Um, ah, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. So let's just do that. And what Thomas is saying, the easiest way to do that would be under mouse control, use the action filter of um, if the placeholder for the hotspot. Let's just say if the title equals blank, it's going to work. Um, if it doesn't equal blank, then that should, let's bring that back onto the screen. So there we go. Because there's, because there's no title, the action filter is saying, if there's no title, then don't show it. And that's exactly what's happening. Now I could have done that with description or any of the others. Um, but I just use the title because I'm not using the title in this particular. I'm only using the point hotspot for um, as a placeholder to anchor my um, elements. So, yeah, so under the mouse control, just go back over that then just to um, confirm that on mouse enter, it will only show the tooltip if there is nothing in the title. So if I've got a title in there, so let's just prove the point. So if I... Put a title in there so anything here we go that should now show it and if it's blank the action field will say if it's blank show no text box and that does that there you go so i hope that answered that one any more bring it on <laughs> <laughs> no i'm I on think a roll <laughs> Uh, but Luca says, uh, thanks again, Martin. Great software. See all of you next time. And yeah, I guess that's the end. Okay, dokie. Right. Um, if that's the case, then a um, couple of things. We're looking at droplets for our next um, webinar. Now, now, now we're doing them fortnightly now. So every couple of weeks instead of every week. Um, uh, so the next one, um, I haven't got a calendar in front of me, but two weeks from now. Um, we're doing one on droplets, um, so that should be quite cool. Uh, using droplets to you know, batch stuff, um, uh, so that'd be uh, quite a cool one. But if you guys have got any ideas for webinars, um, please uh, send them in to support at ggnome.com, um, so we can you know and and we can sift through them and see what's feasible to do and what's not. Um, but yeah, any ideas you've got, I mean, all ideas will be considered um but yeah if you can but anyway that's it from me um i hope you've enjoyed it and seen something new and something different and you know a different way of doing stuff i think you know having you know these being able to change the mouse cursor i mean i'm just using the same graphic but i'm adding a graphic with it i mean i could have changed the color of it i could have changed the size of it you know the sky's the limit. It's you really down to your imagination what you do with this. But yeah, it's just a nice little way of, you know, changing things. You know, I just, it's quite a nice little trick to do. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, Karen? Yeah. Um, so the next webinar will be November 11th. And right, we'll okay. be working on uh, on droplets because, yeah, they're, it's a pretty cool little function of Panda 2 VR that you might not know. And Object um, 2 VR. Luca, what about version seven? Version seven is being worked on. There is no um, definite date for release. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for everyone. And uh, I enjoyed it too. Learned a lot already today. So thanks a lot. As I say, same place, same time in a fortnight's time. Take it easy, everyone. <laughs> Have a good day. And thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. <laughs>